Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. I hope you're doing all doing really well. Um, it's beautiful in Brighton this afternoon, beautiful and sunny, um, and uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, come online and talk about um, a common problem, actually, for which there's not a great deal of research and guidance, and that's the management of calf tears. Now, uh, partly wanted to put this together because we've had a few requests about this and there isn't a great deal of guidance out there. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the risk factors, uh, the rehab strategies that we might use and how we might plan a return to running process after an acute calf tear. Also, um, I've put a link to some extra free running resources for you in the title, and I've put it in my uh, Instagram bio as well for people to check out later. So if you want to look at more videos there, we've got links on Achilles tendinopathy, like back pain, lateral hip pain, etc. Do dive into those. So let's start with a, a comment from the research. Um, and this, this is from um, Ishoya Tool's really recent systematic review that looked at a range of different muscle injuries, hamstrings, rectus femoris, adductor, and calf. And they were reviewing the literature for diagnosis, uh, prevention, and treatment of muscle injuries. And they concluded, particularly with a the calf, there was very, li very limited literature was actually found to guide diagnosis, treatment, and prevention in uh, calf injury. So there's actually very little evidence uh, out there. Um, and when I had a look, I didn't find much high quality evidence um, looking at uh, you know rehab of these injuries, which is a bit surprising when you think about how common uh, calf injuries actually are. Um, we get them in, in runners, but also really common in tennis players and footballers. So surprisingly, a lack of research out there. Uh, when I was doing my literature review, I had a look at some of the research around things like grading of injury and risk factors. Um, and one of the things I found, there was quite an interesting paper uh, by uh, Prakash et al. actually looking at MRI findings, uh, grading of injury and return to sport. Uh, and what they found actually, not surprisingly, with um, the lower grade severities, like a zero grade calf uh, injury, the mean return to sport time uh, was about eight days. Uh, grade one injury, mean return to sport about 17 days. Grade two, mean return to sport was about 25 days. And with the grade three, more severe injuries, return to sport was delayed uh, up to around about 48 days. But you can see there's quite a range um, of different return to sports uh, times reported there. So it's not just going to be down to you know MRI findings. Should you have an MRI, you've got to be guided by the person's pain and their presentation, uh, how they progress uh, through the, the rehab with you. Um, but having a look at some of the research in terms of risk factors as well in preparation for, in this, for this video for you. And uh, there's a nice uh, paper from Green and Pizarri in 2017. They found two main risk factors for calf injuries, and those were increased age and a previous history of calf injuries. Not surprising, really, um, that um, increased age is an issue. It does seem in masters athletes as we get older that calf strength seems to diminish. So maybe that leaves us at a greater risk of calf injury. And also previous calf injuries is, is, is not surprising too, because quite commonly these things aren't really rehabbed very effectively. The pain settles and people get back to sport only to have a recurrence because they've not really addressed the rehab needs effectively enough. There are uh, a few things to think about in terms of differential diagnoses for calf injury. You would expect with a true calf tear to have a, a mechanism, a sudden onset typically, usually with the calf muscle being loaded uh, eccentrically with the knee extended and the ankle dorsiflex. So it's trying to contract from that length and position. So sometimes you get it when people are pushing off and changing direction playing tennis. And they often report this kind of sudden uh, pain in the back of the calf, like they've been kicked in the back of the leg. So you would expect that kind of fairly rapid onset and you would expect some lingering symptoms for some time afterwards. Um, because some of the other differentials you get in runners is some runners will rep uh, report more of a gradual building calf pain during running that builds into a point where the calf gets very tight and they have to stop. 
Now that is more typically fatigue related pain and settles very quickly when they stop running. So that would help me differentiate if it's just pain when they run and it stops quickly with no real after effects um, and it seems to happen with longer runs or maybe faster runs, I'd lead towards more fatigue related pain. If it's a sudden onset with pain and stiffness that lasts for days uh, afterwards, I'd be leaning more towards an actual uh, calf tear. There are some more unusual diagnoses to think about here. Of course, nerve uh, symptoms can spread into the calf. Vascular symptoms from things like popliteal artery entrapment can cause calf pain. And DVTs um, mustn't be overlooked. We have had one or two suspected DVTs in clinic over the years. Um, with it, if, it's, if you suspect a DVD, my message is if in doubt, get it checked out. We don't take risks with those. Uh, but there is a nice um, scoring system called the WELL score, um, which can be helpful in, in your decision making process. And this allows you to build up a score to determine how likely you think it is that it is in fact a DVT. So it takes into account things that would be associated with a DVT, like swelling of the entire leg, uh, pitting, edema and previous risk factors such as active cancer. Um, so that's quite a nice thing to um, include in your reasoning process uh, and paper from Scarvellis and Wales in 2016. But if you've got someone presenting with signs and symptoms of a DVT, they've got those risk factors, do get it checked out. There's not something that you want to kind of mess about with. Oh, you know, these things can have quite serious uh, implications. So a few thoughts in terms of you know, mechanism, mechanism of injury, uh, risk factors, differential diagnosis to consider. Next up, I want to think about how we are actually going to manage these acute calf tears as they come into clinic. Well, this is going to be very much dependent on the severity of the injury. As we've seen from that research, looking at the you know, MRI results and return to play, they can vary quite significantly. Some people are getting return to play in you know, as little as eight days. I've, I've actually seen a runner who uh, had a low grade calf tear running a 10K one Sunday and ran a marathon the following Sunday. So we can get some quite you know, rapid returns to play and therefore we have to recognize that our rehab is gonna be very much dependent upon the individual and how they present. If they're hobbling into the clinic on crutches, they're gonna have very different rehab needs to someone who's still managing to, to walk very comfortably without any restrictions. So in that early presentation, um, I would focus on trying to, to manage pain and activity levels. I try and keep people active, but little and often, um, so there's not too much time on their feet to irritate it. Um, if it is a severe injury, they may actually need crutches for a short period of time, but most people do quite well uh, just kind of continuing you know, to move and load as tolerated. If they're a higher level sports person or keen to stay fit, I might encourage them to keep going with some sporting activity, perhaps cycling, rowing, swimming, whatever's not likely to really load and provoke that calf. Now, one of the crucial things I want in early rehab is to try and, to try and restore ankle dorsiflexion range. They often find they're very painful and tight when they stretch into dorsiflexion. That can even sometimes be when they're striding out when walking. So I'll get people to do things like simple two leg calf raises on the edge of the step, just using that nice and easy little and often approach, maybe 10 reps two or three times a day and working into range a little bit to try and restore dorsiflexion. I might use some short duration calf stretches as well, but I'd also in those early stages as soon as possible want to get them to work the calf. So use those two legged calf raises if they can tolerate it. If not, maybe look at some gentle isometric work, simple stuff like tiptoe walking. Really, as soon as you can, you wanna start loading this calf to encourage that healing process and restore the strength. Then as things settle and we go into mid-stage rehab, then we really wanna to start to progress them, go on to single leg calf work. And often this would include your single leg calf raise, potentially progressing and increasing load. And I would try and do that into dorsiflexion as well, so off the edge of a step to try and uh, make sure we strengthen them fully through range. I would include some work with a knee flexed as well. So maybe a bent leg calf raise um, or doing a seated calf raise where we load across the knee. And typically when we're getting into this mid stage, if they're not too irritable, I might want around about uh, you know three decent calf exercises gradually progressing in terms of load, probably starting somewhere around 15 rep max, 12 rep max, something like that, and gradually progressing that load up to build the strength in the calf. 
Now, have to bear in mind that during running, um, that calf load is very high. Peak calf load is about six to eight times body weight during running. So we do need to try and restore that strength to help them return to sport uh, and to actually not suffer a recurrence further down the line. One of the issues when you get to mid stage is a lot of people feel pretty good because the symptoms, the pain at least, can settle fairly rapidly. So they might they feel they no longer need their uh, their treatment and rush back to sport only to suffer a recurrence. So we need to let people know that it's good that their symptoms are better, but we want them to stay on board with their rehab um, until we've got them where they need to be. Uh, later stage rehab um, is all about increasing that load even further, maybe 10 rep max, 8 rep max and beyond, depending on the needs of the individual. And then bringing in plyometric exercises if you haven't done so already. So um, think about what the calf needs to do. It needs to manage vertical forces. So we could be doing stuff that involves managing those forces like squat jumps, um, those types of things, hopping in place. Uh, it needs to manage horizontal forces. So I would bring in things like bounding to try and help to manage that or combine the two with high knee skipping. We, we often see in sprinters, the calf needs to be able to produce enough stiffness. So in those guys and uh, you know, high level athletes, I'll often do um, really explosive isometric work like um, jogging on the spot and really driving the leg down towards the floor and landing on the toes without letting that heel drop towards the floor. So we get that calf to produce this good isometric stiffness. In terms of return to sport we have to be guided by the individual and their goals uh, but when i would look for certain signs i want them to be walking for half an hour without pain and brisk walking without any problems i typically want them to be able to do at least the same in terms of calf raises as their good leg ideally sort of 20 25 plus and i want to see them comfortable with jogging on the spot for at least a minute before i might start to reintroduce some slow running first of all and it is important that we start with the slow running the calf stress will increase significantly as we run faster so we start with the slow running on the flat we gradually increase the distance first and then when we're increasing achieving the distance goals then we start to bring in speed work so maybe medium intensity work like tempo runs before progressing on to your interval training Likewise, with our hill sessions, that's going to stress the calf more. So I wouldn't tend to bring those in until we've got good full dorsiflexion range and we're tolerating running on the flat. Then we start to bring some slope work into it. And it's usually a question of changing one thing at a time rather than all at once. Now, we also want to think about footwear selection, particularly if someone's limited with ankle dorsiflexion. Um, in the early stages, we might get them to wear a shoe with a nice heel to toe drop, nice large heel to toe drop, so they're not going into deeper dorsiflexion positions. And if we're returning them to running, we might favor that shoe design over a very minimalist shoe, um, at least in the early stages, because it's going to reduce the, the dorsiflexion requirements for them. If this seems to be something that's come about with a recent switch to minimalist footwear, we might consider whether that's appropriate for the runner and whether they want a more supportive shoe. But it's always going to be dependent upon the runner and their goals. If they want to get back to, to running in minimalist or barefoot style uh, shoes, we will certainly aim to do that. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview from initial presentation, managing uh, their pain and restoring range, bringing in calf loading exercises as soon as possible, progressing those exercises by increasing load and then restoring power with some plyometrics and explosive work, and then trying a graded return to sport based on their symptoms and their goals and gradually restoring volume before bringing in uh, intensity uh, and hill work a little bit later on towards the end. Okay, well, it's been nice uh, coming on and chatting to you this afternoon. I hope you all uh, have a good evening and I will catch up with you later. Any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll get to those later. Okay, bye for now.